All right, we're gonna spend our last couple weeks of school learning about sine, cosine, and tangent graphs. Um, and so we just spent the last few weeks on the unit circle. And remember that the y values on the unit circle were always sine. And so we have like a depiction over here of our unit circle and they're going by radians. So we're only thinking radians, so at about one radian here is like so far up on this y-axis, then they're showing that same point over here. Um, so they're just showing that as I went around my unit circle and looked at my y-values, I could fill out a graph that ran on just an xy-axis. It's not quite just xy. The y-axis is the same and shows you your range. The x-axis is either theta or t, and that shows our angle. So it's a little bit different than a regular x-y axis. Um, and then there's some key points, so you might want to make sure you get all this in your notes. If this is the parent function of sine theta, notice that I have an amplitude of 1. That would make my range from negative 1 up to positive one. My domain, this is my range, would be all real numbers. This goes on to infinity, all right? And it looks like a wave, all right? So now if we talked about a little bit of a transformed sine function, let me see if I can focus that in better. The lighting's just not good on these gray days then you can see I have it in the form of a sine b theta, where a is the amplitude of the function, and they put an absolute value about it, because you could have a negative a, but the negative just shows reflection. It doesn't mean it's a neg negative amplitude. b is defined as the number of cycles in the interval from zero to two pi. And so if we looked up at our parent function, this is one cycle. I start at zero, I go up, back down to zero, come down and back up to zero. That's one cycle. So there's one cycle from zero to two pi. And then two pi over b, and this is really important, is the period of the function. So go ahead and pause if you need to take notes on this. Okay. So how are we going to use that in today's um, task? is if we're given a graph, and this one says it's sine 4x, so remember our transform function is a sine of b theta or bx, we could call it x. So we can see at this point b equals four. That means there must be four cycles between zero and two pi. And it tells us that this is a graph from zero to two pi. That's what this x max here says. So this is two pi out here. And then it says that our minimum and maximum for y is negative two and two. So we have an amplitude of just one, which we see up there. And then it says how many cycles occur in the graph at the right? All right, so we can just count. Here's, let me get a highlighter. Here's one. And then we have two, and then we have three, and then we have four. Notice how that number matches with the four up there. So if you did not have the equation, you could figure out that B was four. If you only had the equation, you would also know that B was four. So B equals four in this point. And then what is the period of y equals sine 4x. Well, we had that equation on the previous page, two pi over b. So instead of putting b, I'm gonna have two pi over four. And so then our period simplifies to be pi over two. Sorry, that mm -hmm. fell off the screen. What does that mean? That means I complete one cycle in pi over two, because the definition of period is 
the time for one cycle. And you guys did some homework on that in the last couple weeks. All right. So get ready to pause the video and take some time and see if you can answer these two questions at the top. All right. How many cycles occur in each graph? And so um, we want to remember the definition of cycle is something that happens how many cycles between 0 and 2 pi. Notice that the max here is 4 pi. So there's two cycles in this graph. So two cycles. But B, which is the definition of how many cycles between 0 and 2 pi, if this is 4 pi, this is 2 pi, halfway. So one cycle. And that allows us to figure out what the period of the sine curve is. So p equals 2 pi over b. So my period is just 2 pi. And I can make sense of that because the definition of period is the time it takes to complete one cycle. And I have one cycle and 2 pi. Notice my amplitude is 1 on this as well. So if I wanted to write an equation, this one would just be sine of x, or you could write sine of theta as well. All right. Again, we have another one where I go out to 4 pi. So if I wanted to count the cycles in the graph, here's 1, here's 2, and here's 3. So I have three cycles in my graph. But what's my b value? So this is halfway between um, 0 and 4 pi. So b is how many cycles completed between 0 and 2 pi. Well, I have one cycle here, and then I have just the first half of it. So my b value in this is 1.5. Or you might want to write that as 3 halves. So now when I go to find the period of this graph, period equals 2 pi over b, it's 2 pi divided by 3 halves. Remember when we divide fractions, 2 pi over 1 divided by 3 halves, I really take the bottom fraction, I flip it, and then multiply. So flip it and multiply. And so the period on this graph is 4 pi over 3. So if I wanted to write my equation for this graph, my amplitude is still 1. It's a sine curve. And I could either put 1.5 theta there or 3.5 theta, or 3 halves theta, sorry. Now we're going to look a little bit at amplitude and reflection. So we want to talk a little bit about some transformations of the sine graph. And so notice this smaller graph here is my parent function where I have an amplitude of 1. And so what happens when I have an amplitude of 2? Well, it doubles the max and it doubles the min. So if I was going to write an equation for this graph, I see that I complete just one period or one cycle in 0 to 2 pi. So it hasn't been transformed that way, but I would say it's 2 sine x, which they had up there. So what is the amplitude of each sine curve? Here the amplitude is 2. And how does the value of a affect the amplitude? Well, it either stretches or compresses it. That's what the value of a does, and the value of a in any function did that. All right, so here we have a reflected parent function. So notice we had a negative. So instead of going up first, my graph starts down and then goes up. And now if I have a negative 2 sine x, then it's going to have the 
minimum of two and the maximum of two, it's gonna be stretched. So in this case, my amplitude is still positive two, because remember, amplitude is always positive. But we're gonna say on this one that not only does it stretch it, it also reflects. So over here, the amplitude is two and it's stretched. But here it's stretched and reflected. And that's kind of answering the second question too. All right. Here's the last one for you today. Zoom out so you can see both of them. We want you to find the amplitude of both of these sine curves and then list the value of A. So go ahead and take a moment and think about that. Okay, so you can see that our amplitude on this, if this is negative two, went up to positive three and down to negative three. So we can say our amplitude is three. But the A value, if I was going to plug it in to this version of my equation, instead of going up first, which a sine curve always does, it's going down first. So my A value would be negative three. Here, the, amp the uh, different sections on the grid, we're going by 0.2. So if this is 0.4, then this is 0.6. So my amplitude is 0 0.6. My A value is not gonna be any different because it's not reflected. So that's all for task number one lesson. Um, task number two, we're going to take it a little further and you're going to be doing some of the graphing or writing an equation from a graph.